Hey, strong people, Kale Beck here. I'm going to keep it short and sweet. Don't have too much time for uh, this introduction on the Strong Talk podcast. A little bit under the weather, did some traveling, and the flu is awful out there. So trying to recoup and recover. Hopefully everyone's uh, you know getting out of the weather, uh, able to get a little <laughs> relief from Mother Nature and uh, the flu that's going around listening to this podcast um this week's guest is eric dawson at titan barbell on instagram uh he runs titan barbell we have a a great conversation on his uh strongman career uh training clients and how titan barbell is one of the best gyms uh you know strongman gyms in the country uh in in a small space judging by the athletes that all train there and you know the pedigree of, uh, you know, everyone that's came out of there, you would think that it's this huge, uh, area, but it's actually just, a you know, a, a oversized shop in his backyard in Massachusetts. So I think you'll enjoy this. Uh, of course, please go to store.startingstrongman.com for all of your strongman training needs. Go to renaissancepeeritization.com and check out what they have to offer, uh, including, you know, the ebooks on you know the renaissance diet their auto diet templates uh you know they have some new ebooks on managing uh fatigue you know training stress uh scientific principles of strength training is an awesome read i say it every week but doesn't make it any less true renaissance periodization.com rp strength on social media also be sure to visit amazon.com slash shop slash starting strongman to do all of your shopping on amazon that's our oh, that's our amazon store with some recommended products if it's not available at store.startingstrongman.com go there and anything you buy even if it's not the recommended products we get a little kickback for and it really helps uh keep this show and all of our other content going uh subscribe to us on youtube it's just search starting strongman or i have a special request if you follow the show i'm going to be putting up uh some more of my own uh youtube videos with some of my other interests such as uh you know cars and some of my silly animals and some other thoughts not related so much to uh you know the direction i want the starting strongman youtube channel to go so go subscribe at um it's just search kale beck on youtube and that'll pop up and hit subscribe appreciate it uh, you know, enjoy this week's episode with Eric Dawson of Titan Barbell. Welcome to another episode of the Strong Talk Podcast. I'm Kale Beck, joined by my co-host Michael Badalino, and our guest this week, Eric Dawson of Titan Barbell. How are you doing today, Eric? I'm doing pretty well. Yeah, a nice uh, early December day. Just got our Christmas tree and run some other errands. So yeah, it's a nice day. Yeah, it's. I I was you know walking through the neighborhood here and and, and uh, you know I I got a little bit of grief online for posting our you know Christmas stuff up before Thanksgiving but then it seems like that's this is the weekend everyone's doing all of that kind of stuff you got to get your tree put your lights up it's the the first weekend of December <laughs> that's what everyone's yeah, doing yeah this for weekend. sure it's funny my my, uh, my wife was saying should we get the tree. Um, next weekend meaning um this weekend and i said oh that's a little early and then i go on i go online and i see like a bunch of people had already put up their christmas trees like the day after thanksgiving i was like oh maybe it's not as early as i thought um yeah it doesn't it hasn't snowed in boston yet has it no it has not no nope. not yet that's when you really get the feeling yeah, or exactly. if you're in texas you're like oh it's 65 degrees out okay hmm. yeah exactly I feel like it, it has, it's not really winter until I actually have to do something with the snow. You know, like sometimes our first snowfall is like just a dusting out here. Yeah. But I feel like the first time I actually have to go legit shovel or use a snowblower, that's when it feels like it's finally winter. When it makes an impact on your life. I miss exactly. it. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> makes sense. Well, appreciate you coming on. Uh, you know, pro strongman yourself, uh, owner of the gym Titan Barbell. We got a lot to talk about. Uh, just off of uh, America's Strongest Man as well. Um, but I think yep. the, before we go all the way back and kind of talk how you got into the sport, I know you're one of the Americans that's done a few Strongman Champions Leagues, and 
they just had the finals down in Mexico and it and, yeah. and Mike and I were talking and it just doesn't seem like SCL or Strongman Champions League gets a lot of attention up here but it seems like they put on some good shows and just you know want to hear your perspective on uh on the you know competing in some of them yeah I've, I've had nothing but a great experience there they put on a really good show treat the athletes really well um they always find really good venues um there's always they're 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 generally pretty well supported in terms of uh fans will come out um not everything is not every contest is exactly the same but like i said it's especially compared to some of the some of the crowds like say outside the the pro arnold show that we get here um some really solid crowds so it's i think like i said i've had nothing but a great experience and i've gotten a chance to kind of travel the world and um see some pretty awesome places along the way um and like i said they do they do a good job and um yeah i've always enjoyed competing with them do you find it's um like the style of competition they seem to have a lot more of like the the old school kind of events from what i can tell where like if you look at like the arnold qualifiers there's always like a heavy yoke log stones a frame it's good there's you know maybe a truck pull in there but it seems like the sel has like some of the you know odd like uh you know front holds some With medleys batteries. yeah yeah i th- i think that's actually one of the things i really like about the sport is it doesn't feel like i mean i get on some level how you know standardizing that somewhat um is good, but I, I like the variety personally. I like kind of, like you said, kind of having some of the older events and having something a little bit different um, just to kind of, if for no other reason than break up the monotony of just like you said, it's always a, a max log and a, a heavy deadlift and a, a heavy yoke and maybe a truck pull and then stone. You know, like, mm-hmm. um, not, not that there's obviously anything wrong with any of those events, but sometimes it's nice to do something a little different. You know, like um, I had a Hercules hold and in one um that was pretty awesome we got to use you know pickup trucks off of ramps and that was that was pretty fun because i'd never done that event before and um um you know wait for height you know thro- throwing events and carrying events and front holds and um and obviously like you said the, the truck pulls you know whether it's arm over arm or um with a lead rope without a lead rope a, a lot of different uh varieties so i i personally like that um um, just having that variety because it kind of breaks up that monotony and it, it kind of shows like who's well adaptable too. I mean, obviously mm-hmm. I still think at the end of the day, the strongest people are going to be at the top. Um, but I think it also kind of shows like who's, who's adaptable. I know the the first time I actually competed with, with SCL in um, 2016 in Holland, I, I was told the six events, not too much about them. I told the six events and then, uh, when I landed the day before, they changed three of the six events to three completely different events. <laughs> um, so that's definitely the the biggest change I've ever. You know, I I always tell people like coach like you know you have to expect at least one or two things to change in some way, shape, or form in every contest. It doesn't matter whether it's like all right, the weight's going to be ten pounds heavier than you think, or you're going to have to carry it sixty feet as opposed to fifty feet, or whatever it may be. You know, they're going to take this part of the medley out. You know, always expect change, but that was definitely. I think probably the most extreme where it's just like, Nope, we're done with these three events. We're putting these three completely different ones in. But like I said, it's, um, it shows who's adaptable. And like I said, cause we're all in the same boat. Um, so that's, that's one of the things I like about the sport. It, you know, I think it was what makes it unique compared to powerlifting or Olympic lifting where like you know exactly what you're doing every single time going in versus, you know, there's something, something fun, just like, Hey, let's, you know, if it's, if it's different, um, like I said, you generally find the better athletes at the top um, and the stronger athletes at the top. But I think it also kind of adds in that little wrinkle of who's who's adaptable, you know. Did you uh, – wasn't that one of the first shows that had a Stone of Steel overseas, one of the ones you did? Because you set the world record, right, at 400? Yeah, so that uh, so that wasn't that contest. That was another okay. SPL I did um, a few months later. That one was in England. Okay. Yeah, that was the first one. It might have been – yeah, I think it might have been the first one that they had used in a in a in an international competition or in a higher level competition like that. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and, um, it was. I, I always forget off the top of my head, but myself and uh, Stoyan um, from Bulgaria, we we co had that record, you know, for that contest, obviously. Mm-hmm. And then since then, it's been, you know, it's been um, bested. That was definitely that was interesting because that's back when 
um, they only let let us use chalk, you know. So that right. was definitely. I remember the first time I used a tacky towel messing around with this. I was like, "Geez, this thing makes a big difference compared to just having <laughs> just having difference. chalk with that thing." Yeah. yeah. So just to go, you know, just kind of go back, talk about, uh, you know, your start in the sport. Just get people an idea. Is is you're a large human being? Of course, you know most pro heavyweight strongmen are big, but like you know what? How tall are you, Eric? Yeah, I'm uh, six five, and then my current weight's around like three sixty five, three seventy. Um, I've competed as heavy as um, like four ten, um, but over the last like year or so, I've kind of just tried to drop a little weight just for just general health reasons. Nothing, you know, nothing major came up or anything. I just felt felt more comfortable being a little bit lighter. Yeah, definitely. So you know, you yeah. grow. I assume you grew up big. So you you, uh, yeah. you 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 tend to do bigger guy things. You what, what was the you know then I'm um, what was the first time you ever saw World Strongest Man? Because that's a that's a big guy thing. And were you instantly drawn to it? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I remember watching as a kid. Um, let's see. I think I think my first year I watched, I was probably about. 10, 10 or 11 years old when I saw Magnus Burr uh, when he won in the early 90s. Uh, that was kind of my first exposure to the sport watching that. And I, I've always I've always enjoyed it um, since that point. And once I got done playing uh, college football, I kind of just, I was, I graduated and worked, just worked out in commercial gyms and just kind of didn't really know what to do. I was just going in and just kind of like, all right, I guess I'll just keep lifting weights, but just didn't really have a purpose behind any of it. And, um I was talking to a coworker of mine at the time and I said, you know, I've always loved strongman. I said, it'd be great to kind of find, find a, a place to do that. And he actually, um, he had suggested a gym at TPS, which is, um, the gym where I joined and, um, hired them to teach me how to do all that stuff. And the rest is history. I, I, I worked there for a few years and then, uh, opened up my own place after that. But that's, that's kind of how I got started as much as it's just as simple as like, I'd like to do this, and then there was an opportunity that there was a gym nearby that taught people how to do it, and um, like I said, it's, it was pretty much just that simple. <laughs> when, when, uh, what, what kind of, what, around what year was that? <clears throat> that was 08. Okay, so a bit yeah, ago. 2008. So, yeah, then yeah. You, you go to, it's total performance sports, right? TPS over yep. the yep. Massachusetts area. Um, you go there, you start, you do some amateur competitions, you know, your first couple, what was it, you know, instant success when you, you started competing or how'd it go? No, definitely, definitely not. No. So I, um, my first contest, I, I wasn't sure if I was ready. You know, I had hired somebody, like I said, I had hired the coach to, to teach me how to do all this stuff. Um, and I was like, I, you know, I, I think it was maybe two or three months before the contest. Um, and he's like, I think you can probably compete in this right now. I was like, are you sure? And, and you know, cause I'd had a, a good base level of strength just between, you know, playing college football and, you know, um, barbell work. And then I, I, I've, I've, uh, relatively easily adapted to a lot of the events. Um, you know, I think the first time I ever did Atlas stones, I loaded, it was either a 300 or 330 stone the first time I ever tried it. And so the, I, I kind of picked up some of that stuff relatively easily, um, so I signed up for the contest and said, you know, sure, why not? You know, if he felt like I was ready, then I'd take his advice. And I signed up um, for a contest. I took, I want to say it was fifth or sixth. I can't remember off the top of my head. It was, it wasn't, you know, it was fifth or sixth out of, I think, seven guys. So, no, no not instant success, for that's for sure. <laughs> um, I had, uh, um, I had ended up tweaking my back and had to, had to, to skip on the deadlift, but I was able to kind of work through, the rest of it, which has kind of been a theme of my uh, career, unfortunately, is kind of that seems to be my my um, Achilles heel is that that deadlift and just kind of having back issues related to that. Um, but I was hooked. I mean, even though I was in I was in a lot of pain, I was just instantly hooked, and um, I actually didn't compete for a full year after that, um, just because I said, "All right, like I need to build up my base level of strength. I need to get." more um familiar with with events so i actually just kind of took the approach of just like i want to get better um just through practice rather than competing i know that there's a lot of different philosophies some people love competing a ton in order to get that experience uh, i i went the opposite route of competing less frequently uh, off the bat 
and that that ends up um, proving to be fruitful because in that next that second contest I did, I won I won the heavyweight open, um, and um, I competed in a few other contests. Again, a couple of local contests and done well, either took first or second in in those, um, and that was in 2009, 10, and then in 2011. Um, I had asked again, I had asked my coach, I said, uh, do you think I'm ready to go to, to the national level? Cause I wasn't sure if, you know, winning, winning a local contest is one thing, but when you're going up, up against all the best, um, athletes in the country, it's, it's a very different story. And he said, you know, he's like, I think you can do fairly well. He's like, I don't know if you'll win, but I, he said, you won't embarrass yourself either. So, um, and the first year I did nationals, was, like I said, was 2011. That was down in uh, Tunica, Mississippi. Lovely place. Um, and that's actually, yeah, that's <laughs> actually, that's actually where I met. Uh, that's actually where I met you, Kale, and um, uh-huh. and Obi and uh, Trevor uh, Cashney, I believe. I don't know if I'm pronouncing yeah, that yeah, right. Yeah, um, yeah, Cashy. Yeah, Cashy. Yeah, so that's why I'm, that's why I met um, you guys. I still remember sitting there at the end of that, <laughs> the end of that nice little cold parking lot in Tunica. Yeah, that, it was, man, I woke, I remember waking up day two in, I don't know if that was the year, that year or the year after, and we walked down to the parking lot, and it was early, and I was like, it is freezing out here, like, it was a, yeah. a different, obviously, you know, me being, I'm not going to be as used to the cold as, you know, you living over, talking about snow and all that, but it was just, like, right on the river, and it was a special kind of cold, I'm like, man, I gotta, I gotta lift something here in, like, 30 minutes, like, <laughs> I couldn't even, yeah. I was it was freezing. Yeah, it was, it was an interesting place. But it was yeah, good, good times. No, for though. sure. <laughs> yeah, it was. Uh, I think it was that first year because I think that second year in 2012 it was warmer overall. That first year, I still remember. I think it was the first day of competition. It was, I think it was like 42 degrees or something like that. And even even um, being from the cold, I think it's different. Just being able to be in the cold versus like competing and feeling like you're at your your peak or your prime when it's. 42 degrees, you get a chance to warm up on the log, and then an hour and 15 minutes you go, later you go. I definitely had some. Uh, I learned some things in that, you know, in that contest, realizing like, oh yeah, maybe I should keep warming up and warm up again um, right before I went. Because like I said, sitting around being that cold um, for that long, obviously I was not ready. I ended up zeroing that log that year in, in training. I had gotten not a ton of reps, but I was consistently getting three three or four reps uh, in training and then i but yeah that's yeah. just the way it goes it's, i guess same thing happened with me i was getting about three in training and uh zeroed it <laughs> it's yeah. just uh it, it that that's uh something i try to stress to people and like you said you learn things when you go to nationals and all the you know the conditions are very different is uh i think you find that training is just uh it, it's it's exactly that and that you know contest is going to be a whole separate thing it's just you can't control it. You just have to prepare yourself as best as possible. But things like you said, telling, you know, your clients and, uh, gym members to, you know, things are going to change a little bit. You prepare yourself as best as possible. Then you, the, but it's not going to be just how it is at home. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So then I remember, yeah, they go back the next year. Uh, did you, did you, uh, that first year, like, because back then they had it where, like, the top 15 heavyweights overall qualified for the Arnold, I think, which makes yeah. a lot more sense to me than how, how it's, like, the top 20% each subclass or whatever now. Um, but did you did you qualify for the Arnold Amateur that year? Yeah, so in I, say, I would say indirectly. Uh, I think I finished, I want to say 19th or 20th that year and then like you said i think they took the top 15 and a few guys uh had decided to either not go or drop out due to injury mm-hmm. um so i had gotten an email from dion not too long after nationals and, um and I, I i of course jumped on the opportunity um because why wouldn't you right um of so i they did compete at the arnold the 2012 arnold amateur um yeah like however many months three three months later four months later after after nationals there yeah, that's a that's a that's a fun contest. They just announced the weights for this this coming up uh, your last night. Um, yeah, keep it's it's. I think the weights for the heavyweights are pretty similar to what they were back then. I, I'd have to go yeah, back and look, but 
I haven't had a chance to look at this year. I, I haven't had a chance to look at this year's weights quite yet, but it, it seems like they're 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 pretty close. I mean, there were, I feel like a lot of them are within about ten percent of what they were mm-hmm. then, you know, give or take. You know, it's not like the log. You know, I think the log for us was. I want to say it was 320 for reps, maybe it's 330 at most, but um, yeah, you know, it's not like it's jumping up to 380 for reps now, sure. you know, so, yeah. Sure. Um, yeah, then I believe that following year, I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying to remember, I think, you, you know, you, you get your pro card, what, 2013, 2012? Yeah. Um, it wasn't, yeah, so 20... it wasn't Shreveport, oh, ahead, but no, it was, uh, that's the one I was confusing it with, but, uh, you know, when did, when did that happen? I guess. Yeah. So actually, so national is 2012, um, also back in Tunica. That's mm-hmm. where I took second. I took second right. to Chad Wesley Smith mm-hmm. that year. That's right. Um, yeah, that was a good, that was a good contest for me. That was definitely where I felt like I had made a big improvement, you know, coming off, off to that. Uh, also the Arnold, uh, amateur, I had, I placed, I forget what it was, maybe again, they're not like, uh, late teens, early twenties, somewhere like 19, 20, 21st or something like that. And I kind of went back to the, back to the drawing board and again, didn't do a ton of contests after the Arnold. And I just, I think I did one, one local one to qualify for nationals. And I just really just focused all of my, my energy on doing as well as I could at nationals in, in 2012. And that's, um, things really came together and I had a, had a good contest there. Um, I did end up losing to, obviously, like I said, to Chad, that I think that year we had tied on two events. I beat him on three, but he beat me on two, but the amount in which he beat me on the deadlift in terms of, uh, placing, um, was the biggest reason why he ended up, you know, having a, a, a pretty decent lead on me overall uh, mm-hmm. when it came down to it. Yeah. yeah. But that was, Oh, go ahead. No, I, I yeah, because I remember, and you know, it was, uh, you know, I was hanging out with with Chad at that time, um, and he's like, it was pretty much you and him were just like miles ahead of everyone else from what I what I recall, um, but then yeah. yeah, after the deadlift, it's like okay, you know, it was he kind of had it. Yeah, <clears throat> but yeah, it was no, a good contest. Pulled, yeah, for sure, for sure. No, and I think, and then coming out of that contest, that's actually the first time I ever thought about the possibility of, um, of turning professional. You know, I know it's, it's kind of, it's kind of funny. Like now it's such a, it feels like it's such a main motivator for a lot of people, right. To turn pro, to turn pro. Everybody talks about that. I want to turn pro, get my pro card. Like I, I, I start, when I started, I, I got into this to have fun and do something different. And I, I, I actually still feel that way. You know what I mean? Like, is every single day fun? No, but I mean, I still, I still enjoy it. Um, but that was actually the first time I ever thought about, Hey, maybe there is a possibility at, uh, of competing at the next level. So I actually kind of decided in my mind, all right, why don't I'm just going to do contests where, um, I can earn my pro card or something that would very easily turn into that. So, and then that's actually, I went from nationals 2012 into the platinum plus, in 2013 in May, that was the Shreveport contest. Um, okay. And that's actually where I turned pro. Was that, ironically, that first contest after I decided that <laughs> I was going to start pursuing pursuing that a little more heavily. It's a good point you make um, to, you know, you said you, you want to have it fun and then like you get to that level, you're like, okay, I got second at national. So you were the next closest to turning pro. Then it starts to be a reality, like, uh, maybe a, a tangible goal versus I, I picked up an Atlas stone. How do I go pro? <laughs> um, sure. yeah, I, yeah. I get what you're saying. Um, but so I want to touch on something that you brought up. You said that, you know, like after, uh, that, you know, you had a, you know, the, you're placing at the Arnold amateur and then you kind of change things up in your training and then you get second at the following nationals. What, what kind of things did you change? If you can recall, um, I know it's a couple of years ago. Yeah, it, it was a while back. I know we. So for me, my my biggest weakness, if you will, is has been my static strength. You know, I've always been, um, I've always been pretty solid with um, moving events, loading events. Um, certainly with max distance stuff, for some reason, I don't know. I'm, I've been pretty good at, at max distance stuff, but I knew that like just my base, like barbell 
strengths, my static strengths, um, had needed to improve. But it still does. I mean, it still it still does. Um, so we we took a lot of my time because up until that point, I had done a lot of event specific work. Um, but once I had gotten enough, not enough, but once I had gotten familiar with a lot of the events, I felt like I didn't need as much event specific work. And we kind of we kind of focused on just building up my base level of strength, more squatting, more deadlifting, um, you know, pressing multiple times a week. And I, I was hitting events um, less frequently, not or or with and or with less intensity as well. Um, because like I said, at a certain point. Um, I felt like I was going to benefit better or benefit more from um, building up my base level of strength rather than um, doing a ton of event work at that point. Now I've, I've kind of shifted back and forth. I think it, I think it's a, it's an ever growing thing. I don't think um, that's necessarily um, the way everybody should go about it all the time. I think, I think you obviously need, you need event specific work, but for me in that, in that moment, I definitely needed, needed to focus more on that static, static strength. Yeah. It's a, it depends on a person's, you know, strengths and weaknesses and kind of periodizing how um, specific they are with the events, you know, like yeah. you, you, once you kind of know the skill, you can just throw it in just enough to keep it, keep it fresh. But you know, at some point you need to be strong enough to do the events at all. Um, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And that's what I was saying. It's, it's kind of a fluid thing. Like, I mean, I've gone back and forth between feeling like, um, you know, when I'm prepping for a conscious, it's obviously more very, very event specific, but, it, but if I'm going in more of a quote unquote off season mode, you know, if I'm not, I'm not within a, a few months of a, of a contest then I'll, I'll strip away a lot of the event work and just focus on, on that, that base level of strength. So I don't want to say it's not important to do event work. Um, and obviously, yeah, like you said, if, if, if you've got somebody who's statically really strong and has, has done a ton of barbell work, um, but they're, you know, if they, they pick up the yoke and they look like Bambi, you know, obviously that's, um, they need a little more work at that. Or if they don't have good technique when it comes to something like in, uh, farmer's walk with a turn, you know, like that's something that you need more, event specific work, no matter how much squatting you do, if you, if you don't get that technique work down with, um, making those turns, it's not going to help you in the end. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, so you, you go pro in Shreveport. I was thinking that it was mm-hmm. Stan Carradine, but I think he did it the following year. Um, yeah, I think that's, yeah, what I believe was. so. But, um, so you, you do that. Then, uh, when, when does a uh, Titan barbell come about? That comes about in, uh, 2014, 2014, June 2014 is when I opened up. Um, so a little over a year year after that. Um, yeah, I had actually, I grew up in a family business completely unrelated. I grew up in, in southeastern Wisconsin, and um, my family has a, a rock quarry and sand and gravel business there. But uh, So uh, I bring that up just because, you know, being an entrepreneur, being a, a business owner has kind of always been in my blood. And, um, so after a little while of, of working at various gyms, I just, I knew I had wanted to open up my own place. And, um, I had the opportunity when, um, when we bought the, the house we're currently in, there's a, there's a pretty good sized garage behind it. And, um, I wanted to use that as kind of a incubator, if you will, to, to start a, to start a business and kind of felt like, um, after a certain amount of time, if it was, if it was successful enough to be able to grow it into something bigger than, I would do that, and if not, then <clears throat> that's fine too. Mm-hmm. Was it was that part of the, you know, the home shop, you know, shopping for a house mindset that needs some sort of shop or space to, to do that, or has it just kind of worked out that way? Yeah, you know what it is. Uh, so I, I always when I retell the story, it's always kind of funny. I always say uh, I'm glad my wife doesn't listen to me, um, <laughs> <laughs> because we actually we were in a condo. Um, in a neighboring town and very comfortable. We, we loved, we liked our place. We were, um, we really weren't looking, or at least I wasn't looking, but she loves looking at, at real estate. And, um, is always looking at houses and, and she would send me listings for places that were just, just unbelievably out of our budget. I'm like, that's great for whoever's <laughs> going to buy that. Place. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. multi-million dollar homes. And I'm like, great for whoever's going to buy that place, you know? <laughs> so I literally, I took that day. I had actually said to her, like, don't send me any more listings. Like, well, I don't know why, like, 
I don't know why you're doing this. <laughs> uh, and she's like, all right, just look at this one place. So this, long story short, this guy needed to, to sell um, this house. It was in the middle of the winter. Needed to kind of turn it over quickly. And she said, why don't we just go? She said, if, if you're really serious about opening up a business, this, this would be a perfect place because there's a, there's a garage out back. It's got a good amount of size. And she said, we'll go. And if it's not something we like, then we don't ever have to look at it again. You know? Um, so we get both game and both, uh, fell in love with the place. And then we, um, it, it's a pretty competitive housing market out here. I'm not sure where, where, where you guys are at. We just said, um, let's just put in one offer and, um, you know, we don't want to get into a bidding war. I just, I just said, let's just put in one offer. If they accept it, great. If not, then we'll, we'll move on. Um, and they ended up accepting it. I think, I think a lot of it has to do with, I don't know, at least what they said was, you know, the guy had a, a family and he had uh, put a lot of work into the space, but um, he didn't want to just see it get flipped again. And we have, we have two little girls. So he wanted somebody to have, have the space that would appreciate it. And like I said, wasn't just trying to flip it for a, a quick buck. Sure. Yeah. I, it sounds, it's, that sounds exactly like a, uh you know, my night every night is me showing my wife multi-million dollar houses. And she's like, why would we ever do that? I'm like, we're going to do that someday. <laughs> you know? And, yeah. It's the exact thing, but yeah. And yeah. I've, yeah, I've heard the Northeast real estate's just in like nothing sells for what it's listed at. It's all, it's all bidden. You know, they, there's multiple offers and all goes up and it's madness, but yeah, if, you know, right place, right time. It all works yeah. out. And, and here yeah, you are. Exactly. So, but, um, and I think that's why I really want to delve into it because I feel like there's a lot of people that, you know, listen to this, that do this sport, that, you know, they buy a farmer's walk, they buy a log, they do this, you know, maybe they have, you know, a little bit of room and they go, you know, I, I how do I get people to come over? Like what, you know, so obviously there's some, you know, there's some positives and negatives to running it, you know, basically out of your home. Um, yeah. Yeah. How how did so you know how did you start to other than just tell like you know some close friends hey I got this place over here you know we're gonna be doing you know farmers walks in in my driveway and you know some some deadlifting in the in the garage out back how how did it all shape up honestly not too much different than than what you just said <laughs> I mean I you know um, I was at a different I was at I was working at TPS at the time and I I had um, I actually envision my, my, my initial vision for the place was actually just like, I'm just going to, it's just going to be a small little personal training studio that I'll take some clients at. And then, um, you know, if they want to, if they want to work with me on learning how to do strongman, great. And if not, you know, like I kind of built up, um, a good amount of equipment up to that point, just because, you know, I had wanted to obviously compete and, um, having, having the proper equipment's obviously important. So, um, I didn't, I didn't even, I didn't even think it would take off as much as it, as, as it had, you know, I kind of said like, um, I said, to, you know, that there are some open gym hours and stuff like that. And I thought of it more as like some of my clients that would want to come in, you know, outside of the, the session, the sessions we do together during the week. And, and then it, it honestly kind of, um, it got a lot bigger and I think it just, I don't know what, it, you know, I, I don't know. It's just, it's hard to, it's kind of hard to describe. I mean, I, ha, I still haven't to this day done a single bit of marketing uh, in terms of like having paid for any kind of marketing. It's all been completely word of mouth. And I think that's, that was important to me um, that it's more word of mouth only because it is, it is at my house. I, did, I wanted people that were there that could, I don't want to say vouch for other people, but um, I wanted to kind of still have it be uh, everybody kind of knew each other or if they didn't know each other before they came in, it's, um, the environment, the the culture, I know that, that gets you know, gets talked about a lot, but I think that's I think that's one of the things we have that's pretty unique here. Um is because it's such a small space. Um, even though not everybody's doing the same thing, I think everybody feeds off each other's energy. Um and I think that's certainly certainly unique. It doesn't feel like um um I don't know what, what the word is, like clicky or whatever. I mean it's hard to be clicky in a in a very small space, but I think that's one of the things that's um, that we have going here that, that's, that's been really great is like I said, you could have, um, you know, a 60 year old woman, you know, lifting weights for the first time next to, you know, Zach or Nick had deadlifting 800 plus pounds, you know, and sure. it's, and they're, they're both, they're actually both equally excited about, you know, seeing each other 
seeing the other person, you know, achieve their goals, which is pretty awesome. Like I said, it's, I know sometimes the stereotype is you, you think, like I said, like the six year old woman would be like completely, um, taken back by seeing, like I said, like seeing like, you know, Zach or Nick or myself lift or something like that, but they're more excited. They're like, that's awesome. You know, like, and vice versa, you know, obviously people just want to see each other do well. It doesn't matter what it is. So. One of the things that I think yeah. is also really unique uh, about what you have at Titan is it's a great atmosphere, but you have a lot of people that are really, really good uh, all yeah. under one roof. Yeah, like more than <laughs> just about any, more than just about any gym I can think of, like with the the depth of uh, the field, I guess, I guess you could say. So how, I mean, did everyone kind of, like really early on, did you like, wow, you really have a lot of potential. Like, did you, did you start training with the Hadge brothers early or Alicia or who else would you say, uh, you kind of helped, helped along the way grow in the sport? Yeah, I would, huh, that's a good question. Um, yeah, I mean, obviously, you know, Zach and Nick, Alicia, um, Brittany, Nick Camby, um, can be dude. Yeah. Uh, Rich D. Stefani. I'm just trying to think like there's, I, I never, like I said, I never really start. you know, um, I never really started off thinking about, about that, about like, all right, I want to play, this is to be the place where like all the pros or all the top level people go. It just kind of, I don't know. I know it's just a matter of, um, I don't know. It sounds, it sounds very <laughs> weird to say, but like like-minded people just want to get together and, and do that. I think obviously just being in a very concentrated area, obviously, like I said, here in Boston, it's, um, it's a densely populated area. It's a little bit different, you know, like compared to where I grew up in Wisconsin. Um, there are obviously a lot of really strong people, but maybe they live, you know, three hours apart from each other. Mm -hmm. So it's harder to, to train together on a regular basis. So obviously out in California or down in Texas, same thing, right? Like there's obviously a ton of strong people, um, but they're all there, over but the place. Yeah. They're all over. Yeah. If you're like, all right, like maybe once a month or two, I can go and, you know, make like a long weekend out of a trip to a different part of California or Texas. But, you know, for us, like I said, it's, um, we're fortunate. I think that being so densely populated, it's, um, that's helped out a lot, obviously. Um, and I don't, you know, to be honest, it's, it's really hard for me to say like why, you know, why it took off, um, or, or what drew those people here. I think just, like I said, just being around other people who are, who are good and positive. You know, I think that's the other thing too, is like, um, you know, I've been in other environments and stuff like that where there's a lot of strong people, but I think, like I said, I think the fact that we all push each other and it's, it really is positive encouragement. It's not, it, it doesn't, it, I don't think it's, you know, um, there's no backhanded compliments. There's no infighting or stuff like that. It's, it's all people just wanted to see each other do well. And I think everybody feeds off of that energy, you know, so like, all right, if this person set a PR, I want to go set a PR or if, you know, and on the, on the flip side, I think, you know, um, if somebody's struggling, it's, there's somebody there who's been in that same situation that'll be there to pick them up. And I think obviously, um, people just feed off of each other in that sense. So, um, that makes me really happy is it feels like it's not just, obviously it's not just me. It's not like I'm the, um, <laughs> you know, overlord. I love the fact that like people will come in and have different opinions on like, how to how to peak for a contest or how to prep for this or here's a different way to do something you know i think that's and i love learning that and love then taking that and passing it on to someone else um you know there's so many i think i feel like there's so many different ways to do um to train for the sport and little techniques and um and obviously like i said different ways to to prep for it so i think I think we foster a pretty good uh, environment of, of not being stuck in one way, but rather, you know, learning from each other. Um, so like I said, I, you know, if you have a 12 inch log, right. And there's myself and someone like Don D'Onofrio who won the, the 120 weight class this year mm -hmm. um, at nationals. She's, you know, a, like she walks around at like a, a buck 19, buck 20, you know what I mean? Like, and she, I don't know how tall she is. Five, five, like, maybe the technique that she uses is going to be a little bit different than what I use, just literally based on our body sizes, you know, and it doesn't mean that it's um, completely different, but I have to, you know, being able to adapt um, for a person's size, I think matters because we both have to lift the same size thing. Obviously the weight isn't the same, but um, so I think, I think being open to things like that, I I've, obviously I love being able to listen to, you know, um, 
women talk to each other and kind of picking up on on what they feel like the commonalities between their training are so that, you know, when I work with another woman down the road, I can kind of adapt that because maybe that's completely different than how I, how I do it myself, you know? Um, so I think, I think, like I said, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm <laughs> being a little long winded here. I think, I think being open to, to different ideas, it doesn't mean you're, you're constantly changing um, mm-hmm. what you're doing with your technique or your training style. But I think, you know, especially if those things come into play when you're when you're struggling, right? Like, why am I not able to do this? Hey, have you thought about doing it this way? You know, just changing it up a little bit. Um, I think that's one of the the big things we have going here. Is um, there's a lot of a lot of really good, knowledgeable people, um, obviously strong, but also knowledgeable and people who really are are invested in their training um, um, that help each other out. I know you said that uh, you. I don't know. Did you say overlord or did I make that up in my head? Did I mention? No, you I, said, think I, okay. I think I might have used that word. Yeah. Okay. So I know you said that you're not, but at the same time, you kind of, you kind of set the tone for how things are going to go there, you know, and you mentioned that, you know, it's a positive environment and there's not a lot of, there's not a lot of drama. And that's, that's what really tears. That's what I've seen tear gyms apart, you know, is all yeah. that drama, uh, social media arguments, just stuff that, doesn't seem to happen uh, with what you have, and I think that's that's a reflection of how you of how you lead the lead the gym. I think so uh, because yeah. I've seen people go the other way, and that's when you know you see this really nice place, and then a year later, there's nothing left. You know, yeah. everyone's gone. Yeah, no, I mean, I can, you know, um, yeah, I mean, I won't, I won't deny that. That's obviously that's actually something that's really important to me. You know what I mean? Like I said, that that open mindedness and um, being willing to help each other out. And I, yeah, if, if that, like I said, if that, that stems from me, that's, that's certainly because it's a conscious choice. It's something that I, I think is, is um, paramount to having a successful place and, and helping people out is like I said, I, I might be wrong. You know what I mean? Like I'll help somebody. And then if they're like, Hey, it's just not working for me. I'm like, all right, let's go ask this person. What do you do on this? All right. And maybe, maybe that works. Like I don't need to be right all the time. You know what I mean? Like people who will appreciate the honesty of, of, um, saying I don't know, or maybe maybe there is a different way than um, than the way I think, you know. So like I said, I, I don't care at the end of the day if you use my technique or somebody else's, as long as it's as long as it's helping you progress. And I think people um, appreciate that and feed off of that, you know. I don't mm-hmm. I don't ever coach it as like All right, this is the only way to do it, you know. I right. usually start off and say like here's the way I think will work, or like I said, especially with enough experience, like. I've seen it work with other people, your, you know, your general body type, but if it doesn't work, let's work on something else. Then let's try something else. Let's not beat our head against the ground, you know? Yeah. I, and I think a lot of people, you know, coaches or, or whatever out there, they, they, it, it's a good thing for you to, to know is just because you refer out doesn't mean it discredits your own value to clients or potential clients. But what it, what it does is it, even if you, you, they got the answer from someone else and they, you know, you gave, you sent them on that way. They still remember that you sent them there. So it's still, they still value like, Oh, if I come to, if I come to Eric with something, I'm probably going to be led in the right direction which is valuable sure. versus if you keep saying, no, no, don't listen to that. And you, you keep going on about it and, and they, you know, keep beating their head against the wall. Like you said, then they're like, well, shit, he had me try to do a circus dumbbell like this for two hours and it just kept getting worse. <laughs> yeah. Like that's not, that, that doesn't, you know, instill confidence if they want to come to you for something else down the road. Um, yeah, exactly. And it, it allows me to get better. You know what I mean? Like absolutely. I'm always learning. I'm still, you know what I mean? I am by no means, you know, done learning. Um, about any of this stuff, you know? So like I said, if I'm open to it, you know, then somebody would be like, Hey, I worked with, you know, I, I, I got this pointer from this person and I'll, I'll log that and be like, Oh, that's interesting. Like, let me, let me try that for myself. Maybe that'll actually increase my log or maybe that'll increase, you know, how, how I move with the yoke. Um, so like I said, I, I take that information. I, I try to process that, try to get better uh, along with them, you know? So maybe it, it's either for myself or the next person I work with, I now have, you know, bigger catalog, a bigger, um, more information at hand. Yeah, absolutely. So how, you know, it, it's another 
just go way back. I think uh, another thing, like you said, it's a densely populated area. So I think, uh, you know, space is at a premium. It probably helps to, you know, Hey, I do have a long driveway and a good sized, uh, space to do some deadlifts. You know, everyone's going to kind of yeah. flock to it where, you know, most people are probably living in, you know, apartments, condos, etc. Um, yeah. but how, so how many, how many people, like what's a big, like during the summer, you know, strongman Sunday or whatever look like that you're cramming into, you know, your backyard basically. Um, I would say at, at the peak time, it's maybe 15, 20, you know, like throughout a Saturday, um, at most probably 25. I mean, not, not 25 at the same time, you know, maybe in that 12 to 15 range, you know, Mm -hmm. maybe peak at 20, you know, some people come in early and kind of get, you know, train for a few hours and then, uh, some other people will come towards the end. Um, yeah, so I'd say probably in that, in that kind of 15 to 25 range, um, on like a busy Saturday. Yeah. That's a, that's a good amount of people. Yeah. You know, I don't, uh, what, yeah. what kind of, what kind of space is Titan Barbell? So it's, uh, it's about a thousand square feet. Um, and then I've got, I've got a little office upstairs. Um, and then outside, my driveway is probably 150 feet long and um, it kind of opens up in the back and it's probably about 30 or 40 feet wide towards the back. Um, yeah. yeah, so we've got a, you know, we've got a good amount of space and I've got a, a storage shed where I store a lot of the, the strongman equipment that I can't fit inside the, inside the garage. So we've been able to kind of build up a pretty good um, arsenal, <laughs> if you will. Um, of, uh, of equipment, a lot of variety of, of different, different pieces too. And I, I was actually thinking about it. Um, I, I actually think the, one of the, the few, few implements I don't have is a, a single finger and that's, there's not too much single finger and power stairs. Those are the two, two things I don't have, but beyond that, I pretty much have anything you'd want for, for strong men. Yeah. Two giant pieces of equipment that take up a lot of exactly. space and you can't really exactly. use for anything else. No, and that's ultimately the reason why, like, I haven't purchased either of those. Like, exactly what you said. It's just they take up a lot of space, and they do one thing. And they haven't know? showed. They don't show up as much anymore, unfortunately. No, no. I like you know. I I um, I've gotten a chance to do finger fingers. I think only once in a contest. It might have been twice. Um, and I've done power stairs one or two times. But I I like I said, going back to what we you know originally talked about, I like kind of different stuff like that. I think that's what makes the, the sport unique from, from other sports is it's something completely different. It isn't just the same, same five events over and over. Yeah. I love Fingles fingers. That, that is probably the most fun event I've ever done. I love yeah. that event. You probably, I mean, you're probably pretty damn good at it being how tall you are. And, I mean, do you like, do you like it as well? I, I do. Yeah. Like I said, um, I do. Like I said, I haven't really done it much. I think I had it in one. I don't think I had it in, definitely not more than two contests and I really haven't had a chance to practice for that much but um yeah I, I felt like I was okay at it you know what I mean like I said how good are you at something we can only do it you know two times but um but yeah it was fun I like I said I like anything completely random and different you know it's just like hey let's let's pick up this random thing and carry it as far as we can or throw it as far as we can or um yeah, I, I'm. Uh, that's that's definitely one of the aspects of the sport that that, that drew me in uh, originally because it was just it was different than just um, just lifting with the barbell. Yeah. Just... What event would you like to see come back that uh, we haven't seen in a while? Um, that's a good question. Uh, the sleigh push. Remember that from nineteen? I think it was eighty four. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow! I don't know yeah. why. I, I, oh. <laughs> it's just the Christmas I just, season. I just... <laughs> Yeah, exactly. I was, <laughs> I don't know why I just always get a kick out of that. And I think it was Jan Paul who like took and like dove and pushed, and I just the sleighs that would like slam into the banks with people inside of it. I don't know why I still get a kick out of that contest. Like it's just such a random event. Um, no, I mean I guess in all honesty, um, that's a good question. What event that's not popular anymore? Um, there were some cool I like, front, maybe like a cool front hold, you know? Yeah, you know what's funny? I was, I, I was actually thinking like, um, I think it was like the front hold they had with like a like a horse or like the one, or another great one is like they had a bunch of like, it looked like salamis hanging off of the stick. Do you remember that one? Yeah, it was a good yeah. one. Um, I think it was in like the, the mid-80s, early to mid-80s. 
Um, <laughs> that's I, I love that stuff because it's just so random, right? Like like I said, SEL does a good job with stuff like that. Like they'll have they'll have us list up like part of a hydraulic um, or like a, an oversized battery, just something like that because it's it's visually appealing. That's what's mm-hmm. you know another great thing about the sport. Like you could put you know you could put weight plates on the end of a bar and do the same thing, but it looks um, I don't know. It's, it's more visually appealing. It's it's easily uh, translatable for the audience to be like, wow, I like I picked up a car battery for these guys are you know holding two of them in their hands at, at shoulder height, like, that's pretty impressive. So, Absolutely. Um, yeah, so front holes, I mean, I know sometimes they can, you know, people consider them boring, but that's, that's something fun. Um, I'm trying to think. I, I had something. I like the natural the natural rock lift, you know. I was just going to, yeah. Just yeah. Natural rock lift, like, from the ground to overhead. I think that's a pretty fun event. I got a chance hmm. to do that one in, um, in Dubai last year at the SEL finals. Um just something like I said, it just kind of just goes back to something I don't know, for lack of a better term, primitive, right? It's literally just here's a rock that was <laughs> just in the ground, pick it up and put it over your head, right? And let's see how big of uh, a rock you can do, you know? Um, so stuff like that. I'm, um, yeah, uh, I'm event, trying to think. Events like that, they they um they they test how well you can adapt, like you said in the you know the start of this as well. Uh, like uh, that's pretty much the event that won Phil Fister, World's Strongest Man, was the, you know, the overhead was a, a natural stone clean and press medley, and and he won it, and you know, where I don't think he was the strongest overhead presser in general, but he sure. was able to adapt to the implement faster than everyone else, which is that's yeah. a part of strength, just knowing how to do it, and I I find that, you know, that part, interesting myself, um, yeah, so. You know, you, you 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 said you competed at Dubai, SEL finals last year, everything. Um, what's some of the the upcoming plans for uh, competing? Yeah, that's a that's a good question. <laughs> um, I think right now I'm kind of in a little more of a right now, like specifically right now, I'm a little more of an off season mode. I I kind of tweaked my back um, pretty significantly at, at uh, ASM, and I'm still. Mm-hmm. Still recovering from that. I'm back to training now, but it's still not quite 100%. Um, so I think once um, once that gets back to 100%, I'd like to start focusing on some adding in some events and just like I said, going back to um, building up that base level of strength because that's like I said for me, that's always going to be um, where I can improve on. Um, but beyond that, um, I'm not 100 percent sure. I'd, I'd love to compete in another SCL or another. Uh, I got an opportunity to compete at a Ultimate Strongman competition last year. That was that was a ton of fun. They uh, Glenn puts on a great show. Um, and then obviously, I, you know, I'll do ASM again next year, most likely, unless for some some reason something else comes up. But um, beyond that, I don't have anything on my calendar right now. Um, so, but honestly, like this time. You know, the last couple of years, I didn't really have anything on the calendar, and then all of a sudden, it's things snowball in a good way. So, um, I'll just kind of take take those opportunities as they come. Yeah, just have to have your passport ready, and uh, be a, that's the kind of life of a pro strongman. If they call, exactly, you, if you got to be available or uh, you know and reliable, because you know things change all the time, and promoters or you know people drop out this or that, and then you know if they know they can call you, then they're probably going to call you again if you if you answer it <laughs> yeah exactly exactly and that's you know it's tough to you know it's hard to say no sometimes you know sometimes obviously you have to you know like i think there was a, a contest i had to turn down last uh this past summer because my sister got married and mm-hmm. stuff like that but pe- people understand but like you said you know if you, if you say no enough they're probably not going to call it so sure. um You're i think moved. just being available and um uh, yeah and i think obviously you know someone who's a good competitor you know in terms of you know performs well but i think also uh carries himself well i think goes a long way as well um just because they can call anybody you know and they'd rather deal with someone who's uh easier to deal with rather than than not yeah yeah if you if you if if they're flying you you know 13 hours away and you go there and you're just complaining about everything the entire time and being a, a hassle would you know someone's already doing that even if they might be warranted you can understand why someone's like, yeah, well, this guy's about the same strength. So exactly. And, and he's exactly. nice to, he's nice to go to lunch with. So yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. We, you, yeah, you know, no, you, it matters. I mean, it's yeah, absolutely. Yeah. As it should. Yeah. Um, 
So yeah, what's what's um what what are the future plans for Titan Barbell? Are you start starting to outgrow the space now? You got you know, twenty five people on a Sunday, or you know, I see videos posted every week from there. What's uh some of the plans with the gym? Yeah, so that's actually um you know the gym's in a transition right now. I'm actually looking for um I'm looking for a bigger space right now, um, just because it's like you said, kind of outgrown the space and it's. Um, um, I know it was tough, like having more and more people here for my wife. I think when we originally opened up, like you said, I think she envisioned more of a one-on-one studio, and sure. you know, and, and I, you know, and I can I can appreciate that. Um, so that's kind of the goal. That's that's one of the other reasons why, like maybe over the next few months, I'm a little less concerned with um, competing and more concerned with trying to find find the next phase uh, of Titan, trying to find that right space, that right combination of uh, location and type of space and willingness to have a, a gym um, that does, you know, strongman does this type of stuff. So that's mm-hmm. kind of where my, my focus has been <clears throat> the last month or two. Um, and yeah. So um, like I said, actively looking for a, a new space, a, a bigger space to kind of grow into. That's awesome. It's a good, it's a good yeah. problem to have. Uh, that was another one of my Definitely. questions I was going to have is, uh, is there ever like a Saturday where you're like, I, you know, cause everyone wakes up and they're like, I don't want to train today. And they just skip one sometimes, but the gym's at yeah. your house. Is there ever Saturday you're yeah. like, Whew, I just want to sit here. I don't, <laughs> you know, keep my sweatpants on and, you know, not have to, you know, go, uh, conversate with people. You know, obviously you love it, but I'm, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. So, um, it's kind of a two part answer. One. Yes. <laughs> Does that happen? Absolutely. You know, there's days where I've gotten, I mean, like I said, I'm fortunate um, that I have access to, to all that equipment uh, throughout the entire week. So some days, you know, some days if I've already put in a solid, you know, like a heavy three or four days before I get to that, that Saturday session, um, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll either just do like an assistance workout or honestly not train at all. I just like, I just don't have it in me to train. Mm-hmm. Um, but in terms of like not going out and, and interacting, no, um, no, I always do that because that, that doesn't feel like, it honestly doesn't feel like work to me. You know what I mean? Like I said, I think that's one of the good things. You know, just going back to that environment, it doesn't feel like it's it's work. It just, you know, I love being able to, like you said, just go out with my sweatpants and, and a cup of coffee and just kind of yes with people as they're training and help them out. Because um, that, that can be, sometimes that can be uh, um, a hard balance to find. It's actually the opposite side. It's, you know, if I'm trying to to get ready for a contest and then, uh, people are asking me various questions about their program or helping them with this or that, trying to find that balance between um, being in, in the mindset, a uh, coach mindset versus an athlete mindset, trying to balance those two could be, can be challenging. And people are, are, are generally pretty good. have always been good about that. Like knowing, Hey, like maybe don't come up to me right when I'm about to, <laughs> right when I'm about to uh, take a thousand pound yoke. Um, so people are always, are always really conscious of that. And, you know, they'll save questions for, between sets or at the end of the day, or they'll email me afterward. Um, but like I said, I also know that sometimes that may be the only interaction they have with me in, in person. So I don't want to, I, you know, I definitely don't want to give up the vibe. Be like, don't talk to me. You know what I mean? So, um, <clears throat> having that, having that balance, um, can be challenging at times, but it's, it all goes with the territory. You know, if I didn't want that, I, I shouldn't have opened up a gym. So <laughs> absolutely, man, I really appreciate it. This was awesome. Um, <clears throat> oh, Mike, Mike has two more questions. Mike, go with your questions. Mike. <laughs> all right. All right. Okay. First question, the serious one. Yeah. Uh, favorite moment in competition for you? Favorite one event. Ooh. Um, I think, uh, it's really hard to say. I think, Winning the winning that SEL contest I did last year, the Holland one was you know the first my first international win. That was pretty um, that was pretty special because that was a good lineup and I had, I had, everything just kind of fell exactly in the place for me. Like I, I'm I'm under no you know illusions of grandeur that like the guys I beat like honestly some of them are, are just better than me. But it just it just that one day everything fell into place. I had a perfect contest and and I was able to beat them. So I think that was a that was a pretty awesome. Uh, pretty awesome experience um i think going and competing uh also in the ultimate uh ultimate strongman um last year because that that crowd and that whole setup was was insane i, mean, I don't know how many thousands of people they had there but 
being in that environment, we came out to like, you know, WWF style, like intros. And, um, that definitely felt like, um, like the sport had, you know, it was a very different version of the sport in a good way. Um, like it's something that it can be grown into, you know, into mm-hmm. that. I feel like that would, that's kind of the ultimate, I think, goal or dream for, for those type of contests to be here in the U S um, to kind of be run like that. That would be amazing. Yeah, I definitely agree. And the second question, the, the, the less serious one. So at what point did you decide that you were going to bring that suit to Strongman Nationals and outdress everyone at the banquet? Because <laughs> well, it right. was also perfectly tailored, I have to admit. I mean, it was... It was yeah, it was that, could, that could be a big and tall commercial, how, how you address that. <laughs> hey, that I'd, I'd do it. A little extra income on the side. I'd always want to be a plus-size model. So, <laughs> um, <laughs> um, To answer your question, I, I my wardrobe pretty much consists of uh, t-shirts, mesh shorts, uh, like one pair of jeans. And then I have a couple of suits cause, and I don't have anything in between. Like it's just, <laughs> so obviously I didn't want to wear a t-shirt and shorts to that dinner. So I said, all right, why don't I bring on a suit? And I wasn't sure how I didn't want to be, I didn't want to be too hot. And obviously it was, I didn't realize we were going to be outside and that stuff. That's why I ended up wearing that, that linen suit. So, um, it pretty much just was just a matter of like, I wasn't sure how, um, how dressed up everybody was going to be. So I didn't want to be, I'd, I'd always rather be a little overdressed than underdressed, I guess. Sure. To answer that question. Yeah. Well, they gave us no directions. They're just like banquet. And you're like, okay. Yeah. So we're, well, everyone was outside and you had people ranging from, you know, some people in shorts to, and flip flops to Eric Dawson in a suit. Yeah. <laughs> well, like I said, you know, when in Vegas, right? Like I figured why not dress up? Cause I wasn't sure what we're going to do afterwards. Stuff like that. So, yeah, like I said, I'd always rather be overdressed than underdressed. Definitely. It's a good lesson to have, and you know, when you come out there, you're looking – it was like uh, like the Kingpin from Punisher. A very, <laughs> very very similar look, I thought. Yeah. <laughs> That's the tagline for this podcast. Better to be overdressed than underdressed. Exactly, if you're going to yep. get one thing. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, it was, it was great talking to you. Thanks for taking your time. Um, if, uh, you know, people want to – you know, check out the gym or, you know, kind of follow what, what you're doing. I know, you you know, you do uh, some online programming and coaching as well. How, how can they yep. get a hold of you? What's the best way to follow along? Yeah. <clears throat> yep. So um, I'm on, obviously, various social media, uh, Titan Barbell. You can find me on Instagram, on Facebook. Uh, if they want to email me for, for programming or coaching or anything like that or just any general questions, uh, Derek, E-R-I-C at TitanBarbell.net. Uh, is my email um, or titanbarbell.net for uh, website as well. Awesome, appreciate it. And what what town is a uh, Titan in? Uh, it's in Medford, Medford, Massachusetts. Yeah. Thanks, man. Really appreciate you coming on. You know, thanks thanks for uh, you taking the time as well, Mike. Follow Mike at Chrono Strength. Uh, myself at Let K Lift, and uh, everything else. Strongman at, at Starting Strongman, startingstrongman.com, and uh, we'll talk to you next week.